talk louder through this. Yeah, they got to talk louder. Yeah. Well, it's hard to read yeah. and talk. Yeah. Uh, there's very much a common theme and common adjectives about Saul that you're going to hear probably throughout the afternoon. What I want to say was we are all here to honor Saul and Ruth because when you speak about Saul, you necessarily have to include Ruth and vice versa. They have always and will always will be spiritually inseparable. My family first met the Gerbers at a bar mitzvah in 1964, a chance meeting. My mom and dad were placed at the same table as Saul and Ruth. Business must have been the topic of conversation between my dad and Saul because over the ensuing years, their business dealings turned into a very powerful friendship and a partnership. As business opportunities were presented to either Saul or my dad, they would make sure to consult and include the other. When schedules permitted, they vacationed together. But the scheduling was a little harder for my parents. Saul and Ruth were empty nesters year before my parents. In other words, I was still in grade school when Morning and Richard were long out of the house. <laughs> but, it was, but it was a night, just kidding. But it was in 1981 when I had a chance to establish my relationship with Saul. I was an attorney and counsel for a real estate development company in San Diego and was presented a few uh, investment opportunities in real estate. So I called my dad to see if he was interested in investing. And my dad said, call Saul, here's his number, and if you can convince Saul to invest, then we both will. <laughs> I remember saying to dad, dad, it's not a big deal, you want to invest. And he said, John, call Saul, it'll be worth your while. So in retrospect, it's like the time when my dad gave me a cigar to smoke when I was 10 years old. Uh -huh. I took one puff, choked, and never smoked again. Somehow, somewhere, my dad knew. So I called Saul, and as you can imagine, like that cigar incident, I didn't know what to expect. And just like the thousands of other subsequent calls I had the pleasure of having with Saul, he was a gentleman and a gentle man. He posed questions and spotted issues. He educated, but never in a condescending way or self-indulgent. He never displayed an ego. He was always humble. He was always consistent and fair. We also talked about politics and sports, and we always, in every conversation, talked about family. But getting back to our first business conversation, he concluded by saying he wanted to invest and that I should keep bringing him deals. My life drastically changed in 1988. My father died late at night on a Sunday evening in September of that year. I drove to LA at two in the morning by 5 a.m., my mother asked, that would I please call Saul and tell him not to expect my dad at lunch that day. She had found his calendar, and it said, lunch with Saul. After the shock of the news, he told me he would always be there for me and my family, and he always was. Though he was already 80 years old in 1992, he and Ruth made sure to attend Linda's and my wedding in hot, humid Toledo, Ohio in August. And our first child, Bernie, was uh, named after my father, was born in 1993. Bernie is special and has special needs. And from December of 1993, I've been involved with charitable organizations helping children with developmental disabilities. Saul has always been the most supportive and generous surrogate father anyone could have. He has always just been a phone call away. And then just last October, our daughter Hannah was bought mitzvah in San Diego. Saul, at 97 years of age, wasn't going to miss the celebration. And then, to be truly honored, and a moment we will always cherish, my daughter called upon Saul to light a candle on behalf of my parents. Ironically, the circle opened at a bar mitzvah in 1964 and was closed at a bat mitzvah in 2009. In reflection, the memories of Saul have all been good. They will always the way he treated everyone with respect, the way he loved Ruth and his children, the way he was always there for me and my families, always. Saul, you will never be forgotten.